Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of Hot Takes where I went on and asked for your hot takes on anything EDM related. So uh, let's talk about them. The French have too much talent and they're not sharing with the class. They need to be stopped. Uh, this, I think, is hilarious and and correct. I think for some reason, I don't know what it is, but um, the, the French producers of the EDM world are just a cut above the rest, I think, generally. I don't know if there's a ton of them out there, but the ones that are, are just next level. I mean, just, I think if you're going to name the big three, um, I don't think it's bad to say that it's Daft Punk, Madeon, and Justice. Um, but yeah, just something about the French. It's just like, there's a reason there's French house. There's not, there's, there's not English house. There's not a uh, German house. It's, it's French house is like the, the other big like <laughs> subgenre out there that is associated with a place. Um, so I guess UK garage is, is something too, but that's obviously a little different, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I, yes, the, we need more French producers. Funk can work, but not on its own. It's in a weird phase where it's all being milked for all for all it's worth on TikTok, but conceptually, it has the potential. Tracks like Binary Blood and Our Stars show that throwing a combination of other genres in helps the funk aspect properly shine. At its current state, a lot of tracks are blending in, but a great meal is made with a combination of things, not one simple ingredient. That's quite profound, Deej, and I would agree with that for the most part. I, uh, I've i said this before in a couple different videos. I don't know if it was another Hot Takes one, but um, I do think Funk uh, needs something else. It needs a spice. It needs another uh, aspect to it that uh, really enhances its flavor, and... Um, Actually, I think one of the best artists doing that nowadays is actually Ramesses B. I think Ramesses B is making a, the like this like bass, uh, trap, uh, drum and bass fusion of funk. Uh, there's been a lot more funk coming out from Ramesses B as of late because uh, Ramesses B pumps out tracks uh, pretty much uh, on the like weekly or bi-weekly. And um, yeah, I, I I think he's just doing a great job of of making funk sound not like a cash grab and making it actually uh, sound great. New Porter sound sucks compared to his older stuff like Worlds. Personally, love to nurture and I find his sudden shift in direction towards more mainstream sound is forced and doesn't seem as genuine as his older stuff. Oh baby, we're going to talk about it at some point. Um, Porter Robinson fans, uh, I hadn't seen a ton of it online, but I did see some like people just generally making comments about Porter fans. Um, if you love Porter Robinson, I just need to just, just, or not even if you don't love Porter Robinson. Just take a look at all of his albums in the past and all of his projects that he's put out. None of it is the same. There really is no similar sound design across any of his albums. He switches it up every single time without fail, pretty much. Spitfire EP, totally different than what we got for Worlds. Then from Worlds, you kind of had that um, like Eco Wrath kind of realm of Porter Robinson, I guess, if you want to count that. That was very different. Then you had Nurture, which is also different. I get that Nurture and World sound similar, but Nurture is way more uh, uh, raw and nature-esque, where Worlds was very uh, digitized, and it was specifically, and had this storyline of this like AI throughout the ending of the world, and um, Nurture was not that at all. And now with this, uh, we're getting something that is uh, is totally different. Smile is a very uh, poppy, like, uh, I don't want to say hyper-pop, but like this kind of emo-y pop uh, type album at least it's shaping up to be at this point. And um, I just think you got to recognize that Porter does change it every single time. He's not like other artists. He comes and makes it an entirely different product pretty much every single time. And so I just like, I just, I gotta, you gotta just know that. You gotta know that. Um, I personally, this isn't my favorite era of uh, Porter Robinson so far, I should say. I loved Cheerleader. Um, but I'm very excited to see where the album goes. And I'm not some doomer that's saying, oh my gosh, Porter's going pop. This feels so like whatever. That just, he changes it up every time. You gotta know that by now. The new Nigel Good track sounds like if Coldplay made liquid DNB. I gotta go listen to the song again. Does it really? Okay. 100%. I agree with you. Uh, very much so. I do think the new Nigel Good track sounds a lot like uh, like the Coldplay made Liquid DNB. Um, even the, not quite the vocal inflection, but the vocal style and delivery uh, is is very similar to uh, what Chris Martin does. And I think just the backing atmosphere of the track is very Coldplay-esque, even the structure of the track. Um, I It sounds very Coldplay to me. Uh, and so I have to agree with this one hard. David Guetta's quality with his music has gotten considerably better in 2024 so far. 
On My Love and When You Were Young are both great throwback prog house and trance songs with a lot of personality. His ventures in Future Rave has been very good and even I Don't Want to Wait is much better produced and performed than both of his meme samples hits from the past few years. Honestly, in comparison to names like The Chainsmokers and Tiesto, I found more to like from David Guetta recently than I expected. I just, I can't agree with this at all. Um, also, aren't those, aren't On My Love and When We Were Young also like uh, sample songs? Uh, am I crazy to think that those were uh, those were also sample songs, at least in some capacity or at least in the melody? I can't remember exactly at this moment, but um, yeah, I just, I, I David Guetta, I think the reason, I think, here, here's ultimately it. I think the reason you think a lot of the stuff is better nowadays is because he's actually leaning on the success of older songs, of older samples, of older melodies, and and using them, using and uh, already what's worked in the past and and recycling it for 2024. And I think that's just inherently not great. I get that covers or whatever, but um, yeah, I uh, I. Pff, I just don't think that David Guetta is getting better. I think he's just stealing a lot more uh, than he uh, has in the past. Uh, stealing from good stuff, I should say. Color base is by far the most innovative genre in EDM right now. The amount of boundary pushing it takes a place in this one niche is unparalleled. So many instances of pairing bleeding edge sound design with unique songwriting, seeking to escape the confines of typical dubstep or even the genre of color base itself. Um, this one, I... I... I would have said yes two years ago. I would have agreed to this two years ago. I do think color base is sort of getting a little same samey at this point. Um, I do get that the color base sound design and a ton of the artists right now are super creative and innovative. And again, I still really love color base. Um, I just am starting to see the trend of like, oh, I've sort of heard the song before. Oh, I've sort of get this melody. Oh, I've sort of heard the sound design before. And um, I've heard there was another comment here that I didn't talk about, about Sharks, about his like his very wet sound design. And like he keeps doing it over and over again. And so um, like I know he's taking a hiatus now, but um, like it's it's not at some point it can't be innovative when you're kind of doing the same ish style. And so I again, I don't want to I don't want to slander color base. I think it, it is one of the better genres out there right now. But I am starting to see a trend where it's starting starting to get a little more stale. Uh, and so I'm intrigued to see uh, where it's going to land in the, in the next two years. I feel like some remixes tend to get overshadowed. Well, yes, there are some really bad ones out there. Don't just write it off because it is a remix. Take a chance with it. You may find a new favorite song. I agree with this because I don't. And so I sort of am agreeing and not agreeing with this hot take. Um, I have done a really bad job of, in the last, I think, two years specifically, um, of listening to remixes. Um, there's just not a style I listen to anymore. I used to love remixes. I pretty much used to exclusively listen to remixes. For, I don't know why I went through like a weird phase where I just loved remixes and loved them, loved and loved. That's pretty much all I listen to. But um, nowadays, I just don't care for them. I see them and I'm just like, meh. I just don't really want to bother with listening to a remix, especially of songs that I already know I enjoy or I thought were meh in the first place. Um, I haven't really been like, oh, this will make it way better, this remix. Um, and I think that's a bad mentality. I think I shouldn't be doing that. I think I should be going in and be like, hey, this is a brand-ish new song. Like, I should listen to this and give this a shot. And I just think I haven't done a good job of that. So I agree-ish, uh, and I think I need to do a better job of listening to more remixes. Marshmallow being such a minimal presence in his recent dubstep collaborations with artists such as Space Laces or Sudden Death is arguably a good thing. I agree. Very much again. I this is I feel like I'm agreeing a little bit here and now, but um, I very much agree. And I talked about that when I did a couple of my reaction videos to the Marshmallow track, especially one in Space Laces, where um, I don't hear Marshmallow, and I think it's a good thing. I think Marshmallow does make the tracks a little bit more bland. They feel a little bit more um, linear than I think they could be, and a little bit more uh, like neutered, uh, but not enough where I'm like really complaining about Marshmallow being on the track. Um, just because right now I think Marshmallow is just lost in his sound. Um, Marshmallow doesn't really know what he wants. To do. He put out a country song recently, again with Kane Brown. Um, he's like said he was going to do more rhythm, and then like did stuff with Space Lights, and then he did some other like all over the place, and uh, he went back to like Future Bass a little bit, and then like he was just he's just all over the place. He doesn't really have a real sound right now, and um, I think that's a good thing for the collaborations of artists with like that we like already. Like I think with Sudden Death or uh, Space Lights, I think it's a good in that sense. Um, but when he's collaborating with uh, like reggaeton artists or country stuff, it's just I don't. 
I don't really get it. And so, um, yeah, I guess it's a good thing, but is he just going to turn into Steve Aoki where he just is so lost and he just doesn't make his own music anymore? Is that where Marshmallow's going? I guess time will tell. Quest for Fire is good, but it does not deserve the legendary status attached to it. People massively overstate the impact it had on the bass music scene. Certain artists were already being highly innovative before, and now new innovations uh, seem to inevitably bring on comparisons to Skrillex, which seems uncharitable to those artists. A lot of people act like Skrillex single-handedly revitalized bass music last year, and that's just not does not just ring true for me at all. Um, yeah, I like this one a lot because uh, this is one that I've said a lot. I've said that Skrillex brought a lot of stuff into the limelight. I said that Skrillex was innovative innovative in the bass scene. And so this is a comment that I'd said quite a bit. And so I don't know if this is aimed directly towards me, but um, I would say more so than not, I don't think Skrillex like made this sound of this like trap, bass house kind of fusion style song. Um, but uh, I don't think he made that style of, of like song and sound, but I definitely think he made room for it to succeed in the EDM landscape. Um, I think artists like um, ISOXO, uh, Knock2, I, I think they really benefited from Skrillex being so, in the way that uh, Quest for Fire was so successful. And so I don't want to diminish their uh, their production value and what they were doing beforehand. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I think it would be fair to say though that their success wouldn't have been as easy if it wasn't for Skrillex coming out early on in the year and then paving a path for these artists to succeed as well. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's safe to say that he like made the sound himself. Uh, but it, I think he definitely uh, helped the other artists succeed. And so I don't think you can diminish that fact either. The downward spiral of melodic dubstep is similar to the downward spiral of modern worship music. Although both continue to see significant commercial success in their niches, they are plagued by predictability in all aspects. In both cases, there are more of an emphasis on releasing whatever works rather than creating inspired art. This conflicts with the original intention of both genres, inspiration, creativity, discovery, and innovation. And you are more often likely to find what makes either genre great by looking to smaller artists rather than juggernauts in the scene. Wow, I resonate to this very deeply. Um, I am a, I'm a Christ follower myself, and so I, do, I probably listen to I probably don't listen to as much worship music as I should. Um, but I very much agree with this. I found a lot. I often give most of like the big um, uh, worship bands or the big uh, churches their like um, listen of a new album that comes out, and I just haven't been impressed with it lately. I feel like we also are kind of stuck where we haven't been at least in my church specifically. Um, haven't been doing a ton of newer worship songs. I feel like we're mainly in like a like a 2020 2021 sound and style of of what we're we're playing on a weekend and we haven't really done anything super new because um it just isn't as good as it was, I think. Um, yeah, I, I, I've talked a lot about melodic dubstep and how I don't like the sound. I think the style needs to die, but um, I very much agree with it when it comes to worship music. I think we kind of peaked with the Graves in the Gardens um, album from Elevation. And other than that, I think we haven't really gotten to a, a truly like groundbreaking, like um, a big C church wide, fantastic album that a ton of people are, are digging. And so um, I agree with this very much, especially that the smaller artists I think are doing uh, a better job more often than not. And that kind of goes back to what we talked about last episode, but um, yeah, I fascinating take. I love it. I agree with it.